my gosh, I had a baby. <laughs> Say hi, mama. <laughs> so I had my successful VBAC on Christmas Day. Hey y'all, what's up? It's me, Miss Ruby, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by. I hope this video will be of value to you. Um, if you are looking to have a VBAC yourself, uh, then hopefully this story can be encouraging to you. If you don't know what VBAC stands for, it stands for Vaginal Birth After Cesarean. So in this video, I am gonna talk to you guys about my experience having a vaginal birth after having a C-section with my first child. So it is possible to have a vaginal birth after a cesarean. There's a whole term for it. And there are plenty of people who do it successfully, but we do live in a society where so many people are misinformed about that. You don't know how many people I've told that I wanted to have a vaginal birth who responded like, you can do that? So I, I first wanna address that. If you don't know that you can do that, you can definitely do that, okay? It's super natural for your body to deliver a baby by pushing the baby out of your vagina. That's the way that, that your body was designed to do it. Um, and I think that, well, after doing a lot of research, I've come to find that in this country, um, our cesarean rates are very high compared to like where they should be. Um, the hospital that I went to, I, they aim to lower the rate. Even though they did give me a C-section the first time around, they still promote natural vaginal deliveries, which is why when I told them this is what I wanted, I had their support. So that's the first thing that I would say, like if it's something that you wanna do, then you definitely want to find a place that's gonna support you because I have talked to so many women or seen so many women talk about their stories and how their doctors just will not agree to do it. And at that point, if that's the doctor you're stuck with, it kind of sucks because you don't really want to force their hand and that's a whole situation in itself. So thank God I went to a hospital that did support me. So let me tell you my story. So um, I was due today, the day I'm filming this, which is January 8th. <laughs> and um, I woke up on Christmas morning. Mind you, my entire family was here and um, we were doing Christmas at my house and yeah, I had kind of an inclination that I may go into labor sometime soon because on Christmas Eve, I had been feeling this feeling like I was on my period. So if you've ever been, um, you know, had your period and this feeling comes over you, it's not exactly cramps yet. It's just like this feel, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a subtle pain that kind of begins to radiate throughout your body, starting from like your uterus area. And like I said, no particular cramps or contractions. It's just there. Christmas Eve, I remember telling a couple people, like my mom and my friend, like, yeah, I feel like I'm starting my period. That's the only way I could describe it. Didn't make no big fuss about it. Continued preparing the house for Christmas Day and woke up on Christmas morning, used the restroom, because you know you use the bathroom all night anyways when you're pregnant. And um, it was like 5.30, 5.45 in the morning. And I noticed when I lay back down, I never fell back to sleep. Like I kept trying to go back to sleep and I just couldn't. So like around 6.20, 6.30, um, I started to feel some pain, but I wasn't 100% sure that it was contractions, but it definitely was pain, but I was laying down. So almost like period cramp pain when, when the cramps actually come. So I texted my girlfriend and I was like, just to let you know, I might be starting to have contractions. I know you nosy, so I just wanted to let you know, <laughs> but I didn't want to make a big fuss about it. So one of the things people always say is if you think you're having contractions and you're still kind of early get up, move around, change positions, and see maybe your body just didn't like that position. So that's what I did. I got up and I was like, let me just move around a little bit. Went in the restroom, did a couple things. Um, mind you, I had just finished packing my hospital bag like a couple days prior. I actually still wasn't even fully prepared. Like I didn't have the car seat in the car, nothing. You know, like Christmas at the same time as this going on, it just kind of ha had a lot on my plate. So. In my mind, I'm like, well, let me try to get a couple more things together just in case I end up having to go to the hospital and um, at least get checked, you know? So I'm moving around a little bit. Next thing you know, I feel the actual contraction. Um, it was painful, but not too crazy, but it was painful enough for me to know this is happening. Um, and then like three or four minutes later, I felt another one. So by this time, like I said, probably about 6.30, 6.45, I walk out of my room and my mom was awake and um, I was like, yeah, so I just had a few contractions, no big deal, just wanted to let you know. My mom, she's all, what? You know, my sister hears me, she wakes up, everyone starts getting up, sprouting up, like, oh, this is happening. And I'm like, no, no big deal. Because one of the things that I felt like I really did wrong last time, which I shouldn't say wrong, but whatever, um, was I felt like I went to the hospital too early and I expected things to progress too early and my body just did not want to progress quickly. So I kept telling myself this time around, I'm not going to go to hospital too soon. I'm going to give myself time to really work through these contractions, especially if I want to avoid getting the epidural. 
And so I was just preparing my mind. I told my mom, like, no, I'm going to take a bath. It's early. You know, I'm just going to prepare myself. And if it gets worse, then I'll plan to go to the hospital. Mind you, my hospital where I was delivering at was an hour away from my house. And it's Christmas where I live. It's up in the mountains a little bit. So sometimes we get snow <laughs> and rain and the weather conditions can just kind of impair driving. So I think my mom was like, you are not about to take a bath. You're about to go to the hospital, okay? You need to go get checked on. You live too far and there's too many variables. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, you're making a big deal. But in the midst of all of this, I kept having contractions. And let me tell y'all, like, less than three to five minutes apart they just kept coming and they wouldn't stop and they were getting more intense very rapidly to the point to where i would say about 15 minutes into it i'm not even lying i know this is dramatic but i was crying and the reason i was crying is because i knew how much i wanted my v back and i knew how much i wanted to do it without medicine or pitocin or anything and because of how intense the contractions already were early in the morning i was scared it wasn't going to happen i'm like i don't i'm not gonna be able to handle this it's going to be too much um, so I was already starting to cry and then, you know, it was, it was happening. So my sister woke my husband up. She's like, you tripping. He about to wake up and take you to the hospital. Get, you know, so she woke him up. Good thing she did because things be, continued to progress rapidly. So I like changed my clothes, grabbed what I could grab. We realized we have no car seat for this baby. For whatever reason, I thought the car seat was in my garage this whole time. And I thought we just hadn't hooked it up yet, but we couldn't even find the car seat. So that's a whole other story. <laughs> I, don't, I still don't know where the car seat's at. We had to buy another car seat and then get a car seat donated. It was just a lot. Um, so I'm like, F it. Like, let's just grab what we can grab and go. We can figure the car seat thing out later. Um, and my husband was going to drive me down because it was Christmas morning. So I didn't want anybody else to be affected by this. And, you know, my sister, everybody has kids. You know what I'm saying? The kids, they don't, they don't understand. But in the midst of putting the things in the car and getting ready to go, um, my pain was getting so bad and I kept having my husband come and assist me like put your hand on my back press down massage me here hold me like this and so I got so scared I was like I don't know how I'm gonna make it an hour in the back of this car with no help I needed help so I just like asked my sister like can you drive us down I know it's a lot to ask on Christmas morning but she didn't mind she wanted to help anyways um, but you know I just didn't want to, to have to inconvenience her like that so thank God she said yes so my sister drove and while we were driving she had like the contraction counter thing and she's just like let me know every time she has a contraction so I can monitor it and see how close and far apart they are and so that's what we did and let me tell y'all when I was in this car I this is what I did with my mindset because for, at this point even if I wanted medicine I couldn't have any I will say that somebody gave me a, a, an ibuprofen because I was asking for something I was like oh my gosh I have to make it down this car ride is going to make it even feel even worse I can't position myself properly I need something so somebody gave me like an ibuprofen I don't know if that did anything to help me through the process I was already a blur at this point but that's all I had basically and I was already like crying <laughs> like it's so funny so on this car right down, I just went into a whole zone. Like my friend, she calls it a warp zone or whatever. And I just, every time I had a contraction, I just closed my eyes. I breathed slowly, deeply. And I literally imagined myself grabbing my daughter's hand, my two-year-old, and the hand of this baby that was on its way and carrying them through like this tunnel of escape it's kind of weird it's like I think in my mind I imagined what if someone was trying to take my kids or harm my children what lengths would I go to how would I survive this attack and you know when you have kids you know that you'll do anything for your kids so that really gave me the strength when I imagined I have to protect these kids I have to make it through this um, you know it's gonna be painful but it's gonna be worth it I think just having that picture in my mind of me carrying my kids through this situation it just gave me all the strength that I needed. It was hella painful, but it was enough for me to get through. So I didn't really open my eyes very much on this car ride because every time a contraction ended, I just had to kind of breathe and recover from it. Essentially, it was, it was so painful. My husband said that he could feel the contractions in my back. I never heard of that before. He was, I heard him talking to my sister and he's like, yeah, like I can feel it. He could feel my body contracting so weird I wish I could have felt it myself so we were down we're going down in the car we make it the hour drive somehow some way we get to the hospital I get out every few steps I have to stop and have a contraction and breathe through my husband he's just helping me through you know we make it up to the front and when we get to the top they're like unfortunately sir you have to go back downstairs because unless we check her in and keep her you can't stay 
And so just as a, you know, um, backstory, throughout this whole process of having a baby during COVID, my husband wasn't allowed to come to any doctor's appointments with me, no ultrasounds, nothing, no checkups, nothing. So they did say he would be allowed to come to the actual birth, but only if they kept me. So he had to go back downstairs and I was so scared, you guys, because like I said, he had been helping me through every contraction, holding me, pressing, massaging, all these little things. Um, and yeah, so he had to go. I had no time to really think about it. And I just remember waiting on the nurse to check me in and I just like dropped down to my knees in the little waiting room and I was just having these contractions, <laughs> holding on to chairs. And the nurses are all just normal like, and then she comes, she's like, are you finished? Did, did, did that one finish? Okay, let's go before the next one comes. Just super casual. <laughs> and we go into the room, She, you know, she's like preparing my charts and asking me questions and stuff. And I'm just starting to take my clothes off. She's like changing to this and I'm just like getting full blown naked in front of this lady. I don't care. I just wanted to move forward with the process because if she was going to keep me, I was immediately going to ask for medicine. I was at that point like, I don't care. Give me something. <laughs> so um, and I really, really, really liked her. She was a young lady. And she knew, she knew what she was doing. She didn't, she wasn't dramatic. She wasn't discouraging. She was just very to the point, you know? So we get all that done. My husband's downstairs. I think this maybe took about 20 minutes for her to get me fully checked in, laid down. And she started talking me through my contractions. And every time I had a contraction, she would just be like, breathe, let go, stop holding it in, make your legs feel like noodles, drop your shoulders, rest. Like the things that she was telling me, I'm like, oh my gosh. Cause by the way, I really wanted to have a doula this time around. Since I knew I wanted to, you know, have a vaginal birth with no medicine. I was like, I need to have a doula last time around. I was too tense. I was too scared. Um, and I think that if I would have had somebody talking me through, I could have actually made it through. So it just is such a blessing that even though I didn't end up with a doula, I had a nurse that was like low key treating me like a doula would kind of. So she helped me get through a few contractions and I appreciated that. Then she checked me and let me tell you, the first time that I went through this with my first baby, I was having contractions for like a day and a half. And I remember after like the first day they checked me and they're like, yeah, you're like three centimeters. And I was, I cried, I was so discouraged. And by about a day and a half they checked me and I was still like three centimeters. So when she laid me down to check me, I had no hopes of being far at all. And then when she said seven centimeters, I legit cried. Now I think about it, I cried a lot. <laughs> <laughs> up to this point I stopped crying after this I think it was more like emotional than it was pain but whatever I was so emotional because I was like oh my gosh I'm really about to do this seven centimeters I, I, could, I could be pushing this baby out in a couple hours it had only been about three hours at this point y'all like it was like 10 30 so maybe four hours at this point that um that I had been having contractions uh, compare that to a day and a half and I was like double the you know amount you know, I was just so thankful. So she's like, yeah, we're definitely gonna keep you. We're checking you in, call your husband. So my husband came back up, started bringing all the stuff and I'm like, yeah, it's happening. Uh, by the way, can I have some medicine? <laughs> so I was like, I, I remember telling myself like, okay, you're gonna try to do this without an epidural. So if you're far enough along, then, hi mama, then don't get the epidural as much as I wanted it. So I was like, can I just have the IV med, whatever that is that they give you that kind of helps you just relax. And she's like, just let you know, it's not gonna take the contraction pain away, but it's just going to make the rest of your body kind of relax, which is weird because last time when they gave me the IV med a couple years ago, I didn't feel no more contractions. I literally went to sleep for like two hours. So I don't really understand what changed, but I was like, whatever, just give it to me and let's just see. So they gave me the IV medication and it did exactly what she said. I still felt every contraction, but it was weird because all the little subtle pains that kind of radiate through your body around the contractions were gone. It was like the rest of my body was relaxed. And so it was a little easier to breathe through these contractions because I had that IV medication. But don't get me wrong, I still felt every single one. And I would look at the machine and be like, oh my gosh, it's happening, it's intense. But thank God she was there. She was talking me through these contractions as much as she could. My husband was there. And so, yeah, we just went to work. So for the next couple hours, I was just having these contractions. She ended up bringing like this, it wasn't like a ball, but I forget what it's called but it was like one of those blow up thingies and she told me to put it between my legs. She was trying to help me make progress, basically. Oh, don't be sad, baby. What do you want? Do you want to eat again? Mm. 
So for the next couple hours, we just continued to do the work and I guess I was making progress because when she came back in to check me, I was at nine centimeters. And I think it like, I wish I would have been paying attention to the time, but I wasn't, I just feel like it was like a couple hours. Made it to nine centimeters and then I'm just continuing to do the work and they're basically like, okay, once you drop down to, you know, once the baby drops down a little further and you get to that 10 or maybe even nine and a half, we can start pushing. So I'm like feeling all types of encouraged, I'm excited, um, but then it, you know, a little bit more time passes and I'm still not progressing much. And so they're like, let's go ahead and break your water because your water still hasn't broken at this point. And I'm like, great. They're like, of course it's gonna be more pain, but this should be the last straw that will allow your baby to drop down the canal and you can um, start to push. I was like, let's go. Cause like at this point I had no medicine or like no, no epidural and I could still feel all these contractions. So I was like, whatever, let's go. So they break my water and you know, I thought that I was gonna make all the progress I needed in a matter of like an hour or two and this baby would be out, but it just didn't happen. So at this point I'm like in a daze, I'm in so much pain. I remember like getting up out of bed standing trying to do all these squats and all these positions and don't get me wrong that mess was hard because when you're in that much pain you really don't want to do anything but i just challenged myself my husband would just help me get out of bed and i'm sitting here literally like when the nurse walked out i'm like sitting here trying to push and, my, my, and i'm like babe why won't they let me push why won't they let me push i just want to get this baby out and he's like do you feel like you have to poop yet and i'm like no he's like well then the baby's not down far enough that's why they're not gonna let you push and i'm like but but i'm already nine and a half and it's so painful and he's just like trying to calm me down so at this point when they came back in and they checked me um i was like yeah i was still at nine and a half centimeters and i was like i, I was like i need the epidural and i know that sounds so crazy because i was at nine and a half centimeters and i think anybody else would look at the story and be like wow you could have made it but i i had already been enduring the pain for so long knowing i wanted the epidural trying not to get it and I was like, I remember my last pregnancy, when I got to nine centimeters, it took like six hours longer and I never made it to 10 centimeters. It's something about that last centimeter for some reason. I don't know what it is. Um, well, now I think I know what it is, but at that point I didn't. So I was like, I could be doing this for a lot longer. My water's already broken. And let me just get this epidural. Thank God my hospital said yes. I still feel like it took them forever and a day to come in and give me this epidural, but eventually they did. And so, that's what I did. And I don't have any regrets about getting the epidural. Um, I know that there's a lot of pride associated with it, but I had already worked that out mentally and told myself I'm not gonna let myself feel bad about getting medicine. Especially at this point, I had made it nine and a half centimeters. At this point, who cares, you know? Um, but um, I will say that that mess numbed the heck out of me, like more than I think I remember being numbed before. I mean, from the, the second half of my abdomen all the way down to the rest of, like all the way down to my toes, completely numb. And so when they laid me back down, thank God the pain eventually subsided, but I couldn't feel anything. And I'm like, I'm still trying to push this baby out. So that was a little peculiar to me. But anyway, um, at this point, I really don't even know what time it was. Um, I'm just gonna say, maybe it was around two o'clock or three or something like that. But um, yeah, at this point, I remember like, I was finally able to relax a little bit and I took like a little nap not like a real nap because they constantly come in and ask you questions and checking on you but you know whatever kind of nap i could take i remember i got a little bit of rest and um at some point during this process i remember like finally getting on the phone and contacting people and updating my little group chat just to let them know how things were going or whatever and so then eventually it came time to push and they're like yeah you're at 10 centimeters we can finally push but i was like how am i going to push i can't feel my legs i can't feel my stomach everyone tells me when you push a baby out that it's supposed to feel like you're taking a poop. I couldn't feel anything. So I kept telling them that and they're like, it's okay, just still push. I don't understand what they expected of me. But um, let's see, I think this was about six something by this point. And I was like, okay. They said they were gonna be practice pushes just to see if I started pushing, will it make any progress? Cause the baby still wasn't as far down as it needed to be, but I guess it was far down enough for me to do some practice pushes. I don't know. So I started doing these practice pushes and I guess the doctor felt confident that it was a good idea to continue. So every time I had a contraction, she told me to push, but she would have to tell me that I was having this contraction because I felt a little bit of pressure, but I didn't feel enough. So um, I started to do these pushes and I honestly felt like I was not making any progress because I couldn't feel them at all. The only reason why I was able to do any form of pushing is because the top half of my, like, like basically right up underneath my breast, I could feel sensation in that area. So I was just clenching that really hard and hoping 
that my muscle memory of what it was like to push um, was kicking in. That's basically what I did. Um, but because I, I couldn't really feel like I was making much progress, I eventually asked them, like, is there any way we can, like, turn the epidural down, the intensity of it or something? And they're like, no, but we can just turn it off. And I was like, um, or I, I think I asked, like, is there any way we can, like, take the epidural out or whatever I was asking? Like, I was like, because I, I can't feel anything. And then they're like, um, yeah, we can actually turn it off. Like, it's constantly dripping more medicine in you periodically. So we can just turn it off so it doesn't give you any more medicine. I was like, oh, absolutely, let's do that. And they're like, but the pain's going to return. I'm like, that's fine. You know, at this point, we're pushing. So I don't mind if the pain returns. I just didn't want to be sitting here in pain for hours and hours. So she's like, okay. My husband's like, about how long is it going to take? And they said about an hour and a half before the pain fully sets back in. And I'm like, that's fine. By then, the baby should be out. So they turn the epidural off and slowly but surely, gradually, I begin to be able to feel again. But I would say, because I pushed for about two hours. Um, so that means every contraction that came, they would tell me to push. We did this for about two hours. I would say with the exception of two or three contractions. I remember there was a few times where they were like, let's take a break, don't push, you need some rest. So I was like, okay. But slowly but surely the pain medicine started to wear off and I was able to start to feel again, which was wonderful because I felt like I was able to start getting good pushes in. I don't really feel like I fully was able to get good pushes out until about an hour and a half into pushing, but eventually it still got to that point. So I was really happy about that. They put a mirror in front of me and they were, they were letting me see like once the baby's head started to crown. And at this point, I was just like, I was trying to be very subtle and just thankful and prayerful or, or faithful, that's what I'll say. Um, but low key, I was like super hyped, like, dang, is this really about to happen? But you know, it's one of those things where you don't really know if it's really gonna happen until it happens. Because at any point, anything could have went wrong and they could have been like, rush her into a C-section. So I just didn't get my hopes super high, but I was just very thankful and content in this moment. Um, yeah, and so every time I would push, they're like, you're making progress, you're making progress, you just gotta keep going. And every push, because they had that energy, it gave me the energy to keep on pushing. I did have to move in a couple of different positions. I remember they ended up having me put my legs up in like this weird like curved position. It's kind of hard to describe, but whatever the case, I guess that was helping the baby to move down further. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I just continued to push and eventually I did uh, push and the baby came out and it's exactly what people say. It's like you feel the head come out. And because, like I said, that epidural was still like wearing off. It had worn off a lot, but it, I still hadn't experienced full on pain again. Um, so I think that helped. Because uh, I felt the baby's head come out. And after that, the rest of the baby just slid out. It's like I felt the shoulders. I felt everything, but it didn't hurt at all. It's so weird how natural this process really comes to you as a woman. Um, so that was super cool. And as soon as the baby came out, she laid the baby on my chest. Oh, well, First off, my, my husband announced the gender and it was a girl. Uh, and then she laid the baby on my chest immediately and I got my experience. Like the one thing, you know, that it's so saddening about having a C-section is that it's completely different. They take the baby, they clean the baby, you hear the baby crying if you're still awake enough to hear the baby cry because you might be completely out of it from all the medication. Um, you know, when you're having a C-section, you're shaking, you're shivering, you're throwing up possibly, you're nauseous, all of these horrible feelings. Sometimes you don't even want to touch your baby, see your baby, anything, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so the difference is with this is like you immediately get to hold your baby and feel your baby. And I didn't even care, she didn't even cry right away, but I grabbed her and I could see her eyes opening up looking at me. And so I, I didn't even like fear anything. I'm like, yeah, she's not crying, but she's alive. And it was just this beautiful process. I saw them cutting the cord, um, you know, push the placenta out afterward. My husband got to have the experience being right there with us. It was truly as beautiful as I imagined. And actually I'll say, it's funny because about a week prior to going into labor, I had a dream and I had the same dream back to back. So I had woken up and fell back to sleep and had the same dream. And I had a dream that I pushed a baby out it was a very light skinned baby, bigger than my last baby, and it was a girl. And I and I had been telling people about this dream, so I'm not just making this up after. I had been telling them like, yeah, I think it might be a girl because I had this dream and it was, I was giving them those specific details. And it's so funny because she's light skinned. <laughs> she's, she was seven pounds, three ounces, which is bigger than my last baby, and she's a girl. So I just think that's so crazy that I had that premonition, essentially, whatever you would call it. I don't know, it's, it's kind of crazy, it's kind of bizarre. But 
I guess because I had that dream, it wasn't a surprise to me when she came to me. And, um, you know, everything after that was, you know, pretty normal. Um, the only thing that I would say that's still lingering is this thing that I never heard of. And it's called diastasis pubic synthesis. And it's basically when your pubic bone is disrupted during labor. Some women experience this thing called pubic synthesis dysfunction. And that's when you experience uh, pain in your pubic bone while pregnant. A lot of pain, a lot of pressure to the point to where sometimes it handicaps you while you're pregnant. Well, this was like postpartum pain. And I didn't even realize it until like the next day when I was trying to get out of my bed and I couldn't get out of my bed without assistance in so much pubic bone pain, crazy. So since then I've kind of been dealing with that. Interestingly, the pain has begun to subside, which is not normal because most women who deal with this postpartum deal with it for months and months and months. But I actually feel like I've already almost fully healed and recovered from the condition, even though the first week home from the hospital um, was just painful. You know, I have to start physical therapy soon, but I will say that by the grace of God, um, my pain has subsided like 90%. So I'm almost fully functional again. And just like people say, when you have a vaginal birth versus a cesarean, then if nothing, if there are no major complications, like, you know, no um, preeclampsia or postpartum preeclampsia or nothing like that, then um, you can usually return to normal life functions after just a couple of days. Um, people, are, women are back up on their feet just doing their thing. And that's basically what I've experienced outside of the pubic bone pain. Um, you know, you definitely have, I, I tore a couple times, so I have stitches down there. Um, so that stings a little sometimes when you use the restroom for like the first week. Um, you're bleeding like on a period, so that's uncomfortable. All these little things, but nothing compared to having a C-section. So I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful my baby is healthy and happy and breastfeeding and eating and there's probably other videos I can do but this one was long enough so that was my successful VBAC story um, I don't think I did, did anything crazy special I think I just believed in myself trusted the process and was open and my body really just did what it was going to do and my encouragement to you would be if you want to have a VBAC to um, join a support group I joined a support group on Facebook forgot to mention that um, that helped me a lot because so many women post their stories, their success stories. Most of the women who go for VBACs, 80 to 90% of women who go for VBACs are successful at it. So don't let anybody discourage you. Once in a while, someone will post that they tried and it did, didn't work out. But for the most part, women are successful at it. So they tell you what they did and how their stories went. And it's very encouraging and uplifting. And you can ask any questions that you have. And um, yeah, I think that insight is helpful. So... Yeah, I would say join a support group, um, find a doctor or physician who's willing to support your desire to have this VBAC, trust the process and know that you can do it. My situation and my reason for having a C-section originally was that I was, they call it failure to progress, and which put me in a category of being less likely to have a successful VBAC because it was more likely that my body would not want to progress far enough for me to be able to push. And even though I did have some head, you know, some, um, like it's latency or whatever you call it, um, lag or whatever with trying to progress enough, even with this baby, eventually my body did do it. And so it made it possible. So I wanna leave you guys with that encouragement because whatever your personal situation is, just know it's still possible, it can still happen. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this very long video. God bless you, stay happy, stay healthy. Remember to be you, love you, make it all beautiful. And I'll see you or you'll see me on the next video.